to SVL Free News and Views for Wednesday, May 29th. It's a hot time here in the States. What's the last week of May? Hope everybody had a great Memorial Day weekend. I'm out here outside the City Hall. I'll be telling you why I'm here in just a minute. But first of all, let's thank our sponsors. Mitchell College, Randy Marion, Piedmont Healthcare, Blue Harper Bank, Fast Fields, Key to Escape, The Escape Room, and Statesville Family YMCA. Okay, a couple weeks ago we sat down with City of Statesville Manager Ron Smith to talk about the budget for 2019-2020. Uh, in today's program we sat down, Mike Furman sat down, down with William Morgan and Michael Johnson, city council members, to talk about several issues, one of which is actually something that's garnered national attention. It's the flag ordinance, which relates to the Gandal RV world, and they'll be talking about their thoughts on that, as well as their thoughts on the airport and how important the airport is for the future of Statesville in Iredell County for economic development. Also, they talk about the budget, the upcoming budget, what's in store for the budget this year, challenges to the budget to ensure proper uh, services along with it to ensure economic growth for Statesville in Iredo County. So let's go to Mike Furman and Michael Johnson to talk about what it is in store for Statesville. And also I want to remind you, if you haven't done it yet, go to svlfreenews.com to sign up to your email edition, which comes out every morning at 5 a.m. So always local, always free, SVL Free News. So let's go to Mike Furman along with William Morgan and Michael Johnson. Thanks, Brian. I'm here in Statesville City Hall today with Councilman William Morgan and Michael Johnson. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Sure, thank you. Uh, we've got a lot to get through uh, in a short amount of time today, so I'm just going to dive right in. I um, uh, want to talk first of all about the controversy surrounding uh, the whole issue with the flag uh, at Camping World, uh, Gander RV. Um, we've got a lot of uh, national attention. Uh, your emails and, and phones, I'm sure, have been uh, keeping you busy. Um, let's kind of just give our back up and give our viewers a little perspective on how we got here today. Uh, Michael, maybe just kind of give us a quick overview of uh, what's transpired to get us to the point where uh, the city's filed a lawsuit. The uh, city subscribed to the uh, federal standards uh, for f display of the American flag. That was part of um, our basis in our UDO and uh, it was brought to our attention uh, that Camping World uh, was unhappy with that part of our UDO requirement and so um, this issue went back and forth um, about size requirements. Of course this is a freedom of speech issue and um, there are other implications in this that go beyond just uh, the type of flag, American flag, but flags in general. And so, um, to boil it all down, to distill it very quickly, um, they came, they made an application. Uh, the issue was discussed uh, about making an amendment to that. We did make an amendment to the UDO, which is applicable for anyone now. It wasn't just something especially for camp Camping World. But uh, in that process, they were allowed to increase the size of the flag approximately 10 times uh, what our previous standard had been. And so they came, they got a permit for it, went out, built their flagpole, uh, did the appropriate certifications, they did everything as they were supposed to, and proceeded to put up a flag that was about three times larger than that. Okay. So, um, you know. I was unaware of it, I, don't, I assume you were too, William, until it was brought to our attention by staff members that, that it was the wrong flag. And so then there was an effort to say, please, let's talk about this. Uh, and my understanding, I personally had no direct conversation with the folks, uh, but my understanding was that they did not want to do that, that they were not going to take it down, they were going to leave it down. and so just as if your grass had exceeded the normal limit, they were sent uh, a notice of violation. Mm -hmm. uh, and my understanding is from staff members that they did not uh, wish, to, even with notice of violation, they did not wish to put up the appropriate size flag that they were permitted for. And so we have cascaded to the point, and it's the city's normal protocol, that if you continue to ignore a notice of violation, then the city will begin to find you, and that's where we are. I certainly cannot speak for other council members, but um, in my opinion, if Camping World wants a larger flag, if they would come in and make a request to the planning department, 
to have a consideration to amend the UDO further. Can I tell you what the vote or outcome of that would be? But we would certainly consider it. Mm -hmm. But it, it goes beyond just a flag issue. We love the American flag. My gosh, walk out on the street today, there are hundreds of flags up for Memorial Day in the city of Statesville. And that's something that didn't happen just this weekend. We do it consistently. But um, I really don't know what else to say about it. You know, if your sign is out of code and uh, you get a notice of violation, you know, we're obligated to at least cause you to come in and sit down and talk with us about it. So I guess that's kind of what, where we are. And if I could add to that, you know, a lot of the, the emails and, and conversations have been, we'll just <coughs> change the ordinance. That's exactly what Michael just said. If Camping World would come into compliance, in other words, put up a, a thousand square foot flag, mm -hmm. go into the planning department, fill out a request to change the UDO, mm -hmm. and, and take it to council for a vote, it may happen. We can't say whether it would or not, um, but just follow the protocol, plain and simple. And what people may or may not understand, and you correct me if I'm wrong, uh, once you amend the UDO, it's, it's not just for camping or it's for anyone. So, right. so someone in, in, in the same type of location um, could ostensibly fly a Nazi flag the, the same size and the city would not be in a position to tell them to take it back. That's and correct. The, and that is a, a Supreme Court decision, not the city of Statesville. Right, right. So, okay. Well, that kind of sums that up. Thank you for bringing, uh, bringing us up to date on that. And, um, you know, we'll look forward to see how that <laughs> plays out in the courts. And, and I think we know how it's playing out in the court of public opinion already. Uh, let's move on and talk a little bit about the airport. Uh, some big news in the last uh, week or two. You gentlemen were um, uh, very involved in securing a $9.3 million grant uh, to improve the safety out at the Statesville Regional Airport. Thank you for your work on that. Tell us a little bit about the changes that we're going to see out there and when we can expect to see it. I, well, there are a lot of changes that are getting ready to happen at the, uh, at the airport. And before we get into uh, that grant, uh, I'd like to tell you a problem that we've had at the airport. And uh, the technical name for it is a displaced threshold. And what that means is that when the runway was extended from 6,000 to 7,000 square feet, the pavement portion of that invaded an FAA required 1,000 foot safety area mm -hmm. that was on the western boundary of that runway and bumped up against a Bethlehem Road. So what happens is that when our customers take off, the, it was imputed at the west, I think it was 634 feet. So fundamentally you lost what you added mm -hmm. in a sense. Mm -hmm. But the issue with that is they can't fuel up. And so they have to, for example, we do, uh, let's see, last year between uh, Victory Air and Champion Air, I think we had, we flew just a shade less than 60,000 NASCAR passengers to races all over the United States. And the problem is they can't top off on the fuel side. And so that causes them to buy jet fuel away from mm -hmm. home, if you will, mm -hmm. from their home base. Mm -hmm. And it costs them more. Mm -hmm. So there's an, intrinsic, there's an intrinsic cost to that. We have large aircraft coming in there now um, uh, I know there's a company in, uh, in Conover that makes transmissions that are flying them back and forth uh, when they have need to Detroit for GMC trucks. And they're flying in 727s. So this is a problem that we have had to correct uh, and that we have not had an opportunity to correct that issue. Wayman, I've been to Washington. We've been all over everywhere. This is, this is not a, a 30 second deal mm -hmm. uh, in doing this. But, but what we have done is we have secured a uh, $9.3 million airport improvement grant directly through the FAA, which is not administered from FAA through NCDOT, mm -hmm. all right? So it's, it is an independent issue uh, in terms of campaigning this improvement to the safety area. Well, I'm sure you've heard that we're going to relocate Bethlehem Road. You have to, to recapture 
the safety area. Mm -hmm. The other part of that is, is our airport cannot expand further to the west unless we move Highway 70. <coughs> Excuse me, you and I won't live that long. <laughs> uh, so what we're doing is um, through CARPO, we uh, received a, uh, actually it was a, it was a STBGDA grant um, for $5.5 million. And uh, that particular grant, uh, we are going to build a new road that will come into the airport from the south mm -hmm. off Old Mountain Road. So basically you'll be able to get off at exit 42 or 45 and clip about 20 minutes, I guess, mm -hmm. off your <laughs> arrival at the airport rather than driving all the way through Statesville around to uh, right. I-70 or I-40 and in. in. That's a great marketing advantage since, uh, give me an example, before we made that decision, we talked to the folks at Lowe's, they only had two people from Wilkesboro who actually commuted from Wilkesboro to the Statesville Airport. Everybody else came from the South. Mm -hmm. The race teams, uh, they're either there or they're coming from the South. Mm -hmm. And so this just made great economic sense for the airport. Um, w that will be in process this year and so what we'll now have is, is a different entrance and Bethlehem Road will be relocated to the west. That will allow our airport to create the safety area and expand. Now beyond that, beyond those grants, uh, in the, uh, strategic, or the, the Strategic Transportation Improvement Program, the STIP, TIP as you know it, um, it has not been finalized, the final vote hasn't been taken, but the final vote will be taken this summer. We have been appropriated $16.4 million for the Statesville Regional Airport, the purposes of which will be to relocate Airport Road and to extend the runway to 8,000 square feet, or linear feet, mm -hmm. which means we're going into a different class of airport, we're still be And if I can add to that, sure. the reason just for the for the interest of time, you know, the, the Department of Commerce has estimated that our airport represents about 134 million dollars worth of economic impact, and we're sitting here watching what's happening in Charlotte and Charlotte Douglas. And once their fifth runway, fifth fifth runway, is built, they're going to displace roughly 500 general aviation customers, and we want them, so we right. want to be ready right. for that. Um, we we can't thank. Senator Tillis and, and Senator Burr and our delegation, uh, Congressman Budd, and actually Congresswoman Fox, mm -hmm. um, actually helped. So it was um, it was a nice win for the city of Statesville. It was, and I, and I, it, it, we're, when we're talking about the safety grant part, uh, our colleagues oh. at extremely important to this Absolutely. process. Right. Uh, Karen Ray at the North Carolina Motor uh, Sports Association, very instrumental uh, in their support because they're a big business in this mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. And that is a principal client at this airport, and uh, we are grateful for them and their efforts in the process. And there's one more person that I'd like to think we ought to recognize in that, and that's Leslie Mazingo, who is the uh, owner of Strategics Inc., but she is our federal consultant, and Leslie is the one who really teed this grant up. Mm -hmm. She brought it to our attention and focused our attention and helped in the entire process uh, in terms of getting this done. So there, there are a lot of moving parts to that grant and a lot of people who did a tremendous amount of work on it. Right. But the future there is very bright, very bright. Our issue is to capture it. Mm -hmm. uh, and before I leave that, one more point. Um, we also have rail facilities through the, through the airport. And our interest goes to an intermodal freight facility um, and just to make a long story short, I think that we are better able to serve distribution and freight in North Charlotte than perhaps South Charlotte is. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's much more advantageous and our growth curve there is, the potential is unlimited. Right. Okay, so uh, major happenings at the airport. I did some quick math. <laughs> Counting the, the road project and both uh, expansions of $35 million of activity happening in and around the airport. Uh, the goal of that obviously is to increase the tax base by bringing in uh, new customers at the airport, 
uh, new business to the area, and, and, and you gentlemen obviously think the airport is a linchpin to do that. Oh yes, no question. It, it, it will be it will be paramount in the equation at Larkin. Okay, let's move on to the budget for just a few minutes. The the council is uh, digging into the 111 million dollar budget. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, it includes a 6.39 cent uh, property tax increase. Uh, increases in water and sewer rates, uh, no increase in, in electric rates, uh, and there, I guess there's the imposition of the new stormwater fee. We, we won't really go into that because we don't have a lot of time, but I know one of the issues that has been brought to the council already with this budget uh, is uh, the lack of pay raises for, for 400 uh, plus employees of the city. Uh, specifically at the council meeting last week, uh, there was a representative of the Fraternal Order Police talking about uh, this is going to uh, lead to attrition uh, in, the, in, the, in the police department. I know this is something that you're both working on. Uh, you've had a plan in place for the last year for career development for police and fire that has not been implemented. Excuse me, funding for that plan, but has not been implemented. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your thoughts on, on what the council should achieve during this budget process to make sure that we retain our best officers and helps uh, recruit new officers when we need them and also uh, keep our highly qualified firefighters. Well, I think it's, let me start by saying that you're right, we appropriated funds in last year's budget or this current year's budget. Um, the plan was never put in place. It's a little disappointing that it was not. Those funds will roll over to the next year's budget and it is proposed that uh, there's a placeholder in the budget for more funds for fiscal year 1920. Um, we are assured that a plan will be in place very, very soon. Um, it, it should not have taken this long. And, and to the first responders uh, who put their lives on the line every day that, that we promised this to, um, I apologize that it hasn't been put in place yet, but it will. Um, I think what the council needs to do is to uh, focus their efforts not only on, on first responders, but you know, there's things cost more. Mm -hmm. and, and I personally would like to try to find the money in the budget for some type of raise. We know that we've got a challenge with uh, our contribution at the city's level to the local government employees retirement system. Mm -hmm. The pension plan um, went up significantly because of, of investment performance at the state level. Um, we can't help that. We're mandated to do that. So that, that added to the budget. And then our health insurance costs are astronomical and the increase is big there. So that pretty much took away everything we got from the growth in the ad valorem mm -hmm. uh, property tax. Um, so at this point, we're faced with the um, staff recommendation, as, as you said, a little over six cent increase in the tax rate. Nobody likes raising taxes, but having a, a, the lowest tax rate doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing. It means you have less stuff than everybody else. Mm -hmm. So um, we're, we're still working through that process. We got a meeting tonight, and if I need to, we'll have meetings next week. And the budget will have to be approved by July 1st. That's right. Um, Mr. Johnson, do you see any major changes to the budget between happening during the next couple of weeks? That's a tough question. Um, let me add to, if I may, about career development, what William said. Career development is not a raise, per se, for first responders. What it is, it is a career track such that we guarantee people who make certain performance goals in that track a definitive salary uh, as they progress towards retirement. The issue there is, is retention. When we voted the monies for the career development program last year, our police force was at full roll. Mm -hmm. Today we're down nine. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're, going, we're retracing now. We're going back the same way we came. And interestingly, uh, we're down eight, eight personnel at a fire station. Mm -hmm. Statesville is a great training ground. We train them, we bring them along in their careers, and as soon as they're able to move, they leave. And part of that is, is because the future just isn't as attractive financially here mm -hmm. as it is in other markets. We've got to stop that. So, as far as the budget is concerned, I, uh, I'm disappointed in the budget in that what I see in the budget is there is very little money, almost no money, appropriated for economic development uh, in the city. 
you can you can do wonderful things. I, the uh, the the issue that I used yesterday uh, in the council meeting was AMI, which is simply uh, an electronic read system on sewer and water taps, um, and uh, also on your electric. So fundamentally, that's great, and it makes you more efficient. It makes you you can you can tell people exactly when their usage was, and you know you burn this much electricity at three o'clock in the morning and this much water at. 8 a.m., mm -hmm. but it doesn't expand the base. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm all for AMI, but it is not money appropriated to expanding our economic base. This budget, uh, under the current uh, appropriation, has about $635,000 appropriated to economic development. Where do you want your parking lot paved? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really where you are. So the question is, do you take that money and leverage that money into bigger projects and finance those projects out. We're, our ad valorem rate fundamentally for the next four years is set. The only way that we can move that ad valorem base is organic growth. Our sales tax revenues, are fun, that trajectory is fundamentally set unless we increase our population. What you hear about in the media is you hear about the manifestation of the mall. Well, let me tell you, if you don't have a certain area in your area of dominant influence around that retail organization, they're not coming. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't invest your money in it. So there's got to be a shift in the mindset uh, about how we appropriate and look at the future. Otherwise, in another two or three budget cycles like this, you're going to be cutting employees. Mm -hmm. That's going to be your only alternative. So. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate you taking the time. We're about out of time, and uh, clearly there are many issues we could talk about. We will have to have you back on the show. Thank you. I'd love to.